Hey folks, it's Friday morning, just a little bit before 10 here. Um, what I'm going to be doing today is, uh, I'm not going to take my planter off because I'm going to plant some more beans with it, but I'm waiting for it to dry out. My planter, I won't be needing the tanks anymore on it, so while I'm waiting I might just start taking those off along with that pump. I'm going to winterize the pump. kind of splash some water through the tanks to kind of get that residue of the, um, the starter out of it um, just so it's kind of clean. Um, tanks don't have to be perfectly clean. Um, they'll be opened up for the winter time so I won't worry about that. The biggest thing is basically getting this pump winterized so when we set it in cold storage it's not going to freeze up. I'll be using this hydrant here to kind of clean that all out. I gotta go through in here and cut out all the zip ties and take all the plumbing out that goes back to the planter here. So that's what I'm gonna be doing now anyway. So it'll make my tractor seem a lot more freer not having those big old tanks on it. So how I get perfectly fresh water into our pump to clean it out is we put quick connects on our garden hose like this going direct from the well and right underneath of our pump we got a quick cam lock fitting that I can just pop off here. Granted some fertilizer will leak out of here. I'm sure you guys get tired of hearing that. I'm gonna put the camera down. And we're back. Nope. Put the cam lock on that that goes right underneath this pump. I'm gonna turn on the hydrant here. That'll go up to that pump, then I'll go turn the pump on, and that'll flush all my lines out. I'm gonna come in here, I already kind of have it set up, my nozzle flow check. So now it's coming out through, you can see it kind of the green fertilizer slowly getting flushed out of the lines. Also this pump here. What this does is get all that residue from any of the, just keeps it from caking up and getting all gummy over the winter time because that fertilizer will just get sticky. Plus it kind of helps maintain that pump. If it's cleaner inside the better. I guess this would be a good time to see kind of how our fertilizer dribbles out of the back here. Um, what we use now with these high speeds is just a tube that comes out and it shoots it right over that, that seed trench. So you come along here. This is a little high, I have it set for a higher rate just so we get it cleaned out faster. Also a nice thing that the, uh, I know Surefire does now for their orifices. I'm, there might be other companies that do this too, but instead of running like those silver disc orifices with just a little hole in it that usually tend to catch crap coming through your system, they figured out a way that they just use smaller tubing sizes, like this orange is a select size. They use, I think there's like eight foot, they kind of got a uh, formula to figure out but this might be like eight foot of orange tubing and that orifice is it enough when what that allows it to do is have that still that wider opening so it doesn't catch a lot of residue that might be floating through your tanks but it also keeps it orificed and what this guy here is is a little diaphragm in there so when you shut it off it kind of helps shut it off a little quicker at the row but yeah, that's, we run those on our uh, strip tillers now and our, and it, it sure helps that problem of getting that orifice plug. So what I'm gonna do now is I gotta take this plumbing or these hoses off first, just so we can detach everything. Um, us farmers like to a lot of use, use a lot of zip ties on this crap, so I'm gonna take the side cutters chop them all off zip toy 
That ain't a zip tie. Now that's a zip tie. Just kids having fun. They go all in, underneath to the to the planter um, right here. All uh, nice thing is we got them so you just quick clamp them off. So it shouldn't be too bad. Uh, then take the tanks off. They unbolt right here. They pop off. And then there's a fitting underneath that you lift up on. You basically unbolt these. There's four bolts there. You got uh, forklift holes. You'll basically go straight up with it. And they should, in theory, pop off that way. And then you can take the, the hub bracket off back in there. And then you can take the rest of these uh, frame frame uh, I don't know called, the frame bolts out so I'm gonna do that if you kind of want to know how we put these on I have a video earlier in the year that kind of gives a better detail of how they kind of go on and off so if you want to flip back through the videos feel welcome so this is kind of what the brackets look without the tanks for these Demco tanks for you guys that are kind of asking these basically sit like this there's a clamp that goes around these and you just put four bolts in um, this is the way the hub looks now I know there was older generations I'm not sure what they if this is still what they're using but this is what they used as of last year when we bought these it's all cast and then there's basically a big hub inside there or, or bearing too um, so that's basically how that looks just kind of bolts in this inside the thing that can be the bugger about these is I know on this wheel you got to make sure this doesn't have I can't remember the measurement but it's got to be within tolerance so if you got a lot of slop out here you basically got to take out your dual and redo that wedge kit in there like that so it tracks right because if it ain't tracking right then those tanks are gonna bob up and down which they will to a little bit, just depending on how much slop you got in here, but they kind of have their tolerance in the manual. And then this is the front. You basically got a clamp that goes over the front, sits on top, and then you take four bolts. And then the inside's just regular frame bolts. You can, we take them out as one piece, but you can also do it as two pieces. You can take this top pin out just to kind of, just depends on what's easier, but there is a, Thing we can bolt to we actually just lay the forklift on top tie it tight that way you don't get any play and once you pop that out you can just take the whole thing out so hopefully that makes sense i'm not sure it made sense to me so i'll let you guys work through that nope right now i got to take this pump off it's just four bolts this is how we we bolt it on it's actually the the brackets that come with the surefire pump um, this pump it is an older style. I don't know when we got it. We've had it for quite a while, but uh, they work pretty good for the, I mean, they, they're, they're the best pump that we've used so far. Um, so yeah, we just kind of clamp it on that bar. I just got to unbolt these, pop that off, kind of drag these hydraulic hoses out of the way, then I can take this side off. So that's that. I guess I'm not going to, I lied, I'm not going to do that right now. It's almost noon, so I'm gonna go home and grab some lunch. So today, hopefully, I'm gonna plant some beans. Um, yesterday, I got all the tanks off, and man, the tractor lost a lot of weight. It looks good, she's looking skinny. Kinda of goes from that guy, all dueled up in the front with the fat tanks, to this pretty little lady. I even took the duels off, cause, um, here, after I get done planning, eventually we'll hook up to the cultivator to cultivate our gravity fields. And so when we turn around, sometimes you're turning around in the field, so less tires means less corn ran over, so that's why we try to do that. On those tanks, we leave the, well, the hub bracking assembly. I don't know what you exactly call it. But yeah, instead of taking that on and off every year, which you'd have to take off your whole dual basically, um, we just leave those on. I think they're kind of meant to do that either way you want to do it. Um, there's kind of my pile of pumps, hoses, 
and the hub assembly for those Demco tanks that mount on the back wheel. So yeah, just looking skinnier. What is this little millennial farmer? Gotta have a battery. I could just pull start the motor, but in order to start the, or to lift the auger up, you still need to have batteries, so. These will get something's figures out. So before I get it out, I'm gonna grease it all up, probably maybe for the last time, but that way, I'm not gonna do too many acres, but at least it should have fresh grease and all the fittings when we put her away. Fun fact for you, if you ever had an old John Deere grease gun like we did, but then you were looking for a new one and then your store didn't have one, they're made by, well, that company, Alamite uses the same batteries and everything, so we had more batteries, so that's why we got this one. Never seen anything like that. Any old timers know if that means anything? It's probably those neighbors to the west of us. Love you, Bart. Well, that's it for this video, folks. I'm gonna go deal with this now. Like, subscribe.